Hi everyone, I'm back to update you on how much I own, how much I owed in taxes as a cable technician contractor. A few things you should know about me is I both started and stopped working as a cable technician contractor in 2021 and I also bought my car for work right before I started working. Those are a few factors that have affected the outcome of how much I owe. Surprisingly, it's not 10,000, it's not 20,000. It's 1,151. So that's actually pretty good because when I started working, there was a rumor, be careful, taxes might be 10,000. I was like, what? They're like, in order for it to not be that much, you have to save all your receipts. Well, sadly, I did not save all my receipts and it's all because I bought something, I threw the receipt somewhere and I lost it. I did save a whole bunch but still not all of my receipts. I could have saved all of them and like got like, I don't know, maybe a hundred dollars less to return to the government. While looking through my receipts, I also realized I had a big issue. I didn't organize my receipts. I realized I can't read what's written on the receipt. It doesn't make sense. For example, the first one, NTG space, CP space, Ashtree. I don't know what that is. Luckily with Walmart receipts, you can actually look up what you bought, but only if you bought it with a credit or debit card, not with cash. So if you bought it with cash, you're out of luck. Forget about it, throw the receipt away. So how could I have kept a better record of my receipts? I should have just saved only the receipts that had items that I can actually deduct from my taxes. Instead, I was keeping my grocery receipts, my clothing receipts, like I don't need that. I can't deduct my grocery. Another thing I should have done was just get a notebook and write down cable technician contractor 2021 receipts for taxes and whenever i would have bought something that's tax deductible staple it or tape it to a page and then highlight exactly what items are deductible and right next to it describe what it is that would have made my life so much easier when tax season came because i was just wasting so much time reading every single receipt trying to figure out what i bought where are my tools that i bought it took me about a week. There might also be apps that can um, scan your receipts just in case if you lose the paper. However, I'm not sure if they can actually like highlight only the items that you need highlighted. Like, um, now, what could I have done to keep a better log of my miles? I should have just downloaded an app. I still don't know what app because I'm doing DoorDash now. I'm gonna need an app. I'm gonna experiment with apps to see which one I like most and then make a video about it after I figure it out. But let me show you what I have been doing. Basically, I had to print out all of my invoices. I had my own logbook for where I drove, like the addresses I worked at. So it was all in order. Um, my invoices were not in order. So basically what I had to do was put all the addresses in order and why I had to do that was to check if I didn't get ripped off, which I should have been doing as I was working, I should have been checking, but it just took too much work back then. They were ripping me off about $40, just a couple times. I also noticed another way they were ripping me off was by putting the wrong code for the job. So. Even though I say we get paid $40 per job, it's actually like 42, 46, um, 38. So for example, I was supposed to be getting paid $40. They would give me a different code where it would pay me like $38. There was one page where every one of those codes was off by $5. The total was $100. I didn't even check all of them, but like, that's what it means to be a cable technician contractor. You get ripped off. Okay, so now let's go into the tax details. I'm gonna be showing you a lot more pictures now. Hi, I'm Lisa. <laughs> We're here to help you through it. 
I got a 10.99 NEC. This is just the description. This is when you're supposed to receive it by. How much my employer said I got paid. So I lived in Florida before I came to Texas. I bought my car in Florida right before I moved to Texas. And then later on I bought another car in Texas. This is the car I mostly used for work and this is the miles. I had a choice to choose this or not. So I compared it to another method. I wouldn't be able to do it because I didn't drive my car 50% or more for work. I looked at why anyone would choose the smaller one. I don't understand still. I can't choose it anyway. Okay, so I didn't really take good pictures on this part, but um, basically I kind of claimed a loss because I couldn't sell my vehicle for a long time after I stopped using it for work. I think I put a zero or nothing on this part. Somehow I got this amount in loss. Now for the deductions. They asked a lot of questions to understand what kind of deductions I could take off. I wasn't able to deduct the car registration fees because of the states I lived in. So this part will just show the differences in the years 2020 and 2021. Here are my deductions. Let's start with vehicle. Not many details here. Communication, my cell phone. Supplies. Take notes. There were more supplies, but I didn't save all my receipts like I said, so yeah. Now for business travel, tolls, and other miscellaneous expenses, um, clothes, food. I had a lot more food expenses, but I didn't save all of that either. And this is just how much I got paid on my job 